place to eat.
He rose from his chair, thinking perhaps one of his children had snuck from their bed. He opened the door to his study, and he peeked his head out, seeing nothing but the empty blackness of the hall. He checked all through the house and found his family all asleep at peace in their beds. He stood puzzled in the dark. Logic screamed that it was just the settling floorboards of the old house. His imagination tilted and tossed with old ghost stories he had heard. Stories of Lady Anne Skipton hobbling down the stairs in her one red shoe. Ah, 
Goodman tossed the idea away, and he returned to the candlelight of his study. He looked to the old case clock. The hands still showed ten till midnight. How could that be? Now, the piece of clockwork must be broken. He opened his face to get a better look when he heard suddenly a second clatter come from the hall. His blood froze and his heart drummed a tattoo in its chest with a da-dum, da-dum, da-dum. He snatched up one of the candles, advancing quickly into the inky dark hall to see what was the matter. Once more, the wind blew and I lost my place. The hall sat echoing and overwhelmingly empty. He was just about to return when he heard a single solitary footfall upon the ancient stair. He froze, staring out into the dark with a great creak. A second footfall hit the stair. There's someone there, the good doctor called. Creak. Came another step. Declare yourself! called the doctor, taking a step himself down the stairs into the dark. Creak, creak. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you. 